Hi there and welcome to the What's New in Pro Tools 8 tutorial. Pro Tools 8 is probably the biggest upgrade DigiDesign's done in many, many years. It's a massive change from Pro Tools 7, both visually and under the hood. The most obvious thing is this great new look that Pro Tools has, both in the edit window and the mix window. The first time I saw it, I wasn't sure. I was sitting on the fence for a day or so, but after a while, it just completely takes you over. And once you go back to Pro Tools 7, you realize how primitive it looks in comparison. So let's dive into the new features. One great new feature DigiDesign has added here is the ability to change the position of these items up here in the top bar. By simply holding the command key on the Mac control on PC, the pointer turns into a grabber and you can relocate these items. So if for instance, I want to take the main counter here and place it on the far left of the toolbar, hold down command, there's my grabber, click, grab, it's now on the far left. I might want the shuffle, slip, spot and grid buttons somewhere else. Drag it over here. Many, many new windows in Pro Tools now have this little triangle here, which is a pop-down menu, which acts as a sub-menu for condensed commands. Because for this tutorial, we're running the screen at a very low resolution, you're not seeing very many things on the bar. So for instance, I might want to go down to minimal. And at this point, I've only got those four items. Let's drag that back over here. Let's drag that back over here. Let's drag that all the way over here. And now we might decide we want to also add MIDI controls to that. There's that. Or in one swoop, we can say all, which of course will be too cluttered. But even on a 20 inch widescreen display, you can pretty much fit the whole collection in there when you select all. This is a great improvement over the old days where there was a lot of wasted real estate in the toolbar. Expanded transport over here. So it's totally adjustable now, much more than it was in the past anyway. Next up is the improved color palette. Some of you out there may know about the trick DigiDesign added in 7.3 Pro Tools, which using a hidden modifier and it wasn't documented in the manual, you could add color to the mix window. Because of the popularity of that, Digi's gone the whole hog and made it totally customizable. So I'll bring up the color palette now and you'll see this color palette has a lot more functions than the previous one. It allows us to independently color the regions themselves the tracks, which is over here on the left, that portion of the tracks. The regions in the region list, which I'll show you in a minute. Groups, if you've got region groups, and the markers. You can see the colors between the markers up here. Let's look at this in more detail. If I want to change, for instance, this kick file to a different color, I just select it and we'll see down here, I'll move this to a different thing to make my point. That's now on groups. If I select this, that pop-up down there will automatically switch to indicate what I've done. So now it's on regions and tracks because that's what I've selected. If I click over here, it changes to tracks, see? So it's following the path dynamically. So now if I want to change that kick file color, it's a simple matter of just choosing a new color and that's that. But cleverer than that, of course, I can do it in groups. So I can grab all three of these files and make them all blue. But better than that, let's say you're one of these people who wants to color code everything to the same type of thing. So all your drums, you might want blue. Okay, we can take all the drums here. Now we can see now all the various colors that are represented. I've got little white borders around them. I want them all to be just blue. But better than this, I now switch over here to tracks. And now I want the tracks to be blue as well. And you can see that quite bright, but has changed as well. I can turn that saturation down with this new control. And now everything in my drum world, actually I should include my auxiliary master there. No, but I've got to choose tracks. And now everything in my drum world is blue. I'll just scroll down. I might want everything in base green as it is there. That can be green, but also the base track there. Oop, I've lost my green. And this is a good time to mention what the hold function does. Rather than dynamically following you around as it's doing now, everywhere I move, the hold function will actually hold the color palette on the color that's showing, so you can assign the same color to various things. So in this case, okay, region in track is green. I instigate hold, and now that green is locked there. No matter what else I do, that's staying there. So that allows me to choose the base track. The function down here changes to the word tracks, and there's my green waiting for me to assign it. Okay, piano and B3, so I want, and whirly, let's say I want all my keyboards to be, I don't know what's different, totally different here, orange. I'll turn off the hold mode because it's still holding the green for me. 
um, quite a bright sort of orange. Okay, great. Put hold mode back on. Now choose these three tracks and there's my orange. So you see you can be as picky with your colors as you want. Over on the mix window, we actually can turn this off if we like with this button here, which isolates the actual mixer from the rest of the color coding. So now the mixer can be gray, but back on the edit window, all our other color choices are still alive. Of course, this turning off of the color also affects the matching track area on the left of the edit window as well. These sliders are now disabled because they apply to the mix window. So if I click here, turn that back on. Now I've got my saturation choices. So obviously no color at all with zero saturation or full saturation and brightness choices here. Even in gray now, you've got this option to be very bright or to be nice and contrasted down there. Okay, back to the edit window. Now here's a cool trick. I'm gonna open up the regions list. Now in this sub menu here, if we specify to show colors here as part of our regions list. Now we can also color code our drums in the regions list. So I'll scroll up here. All our drums are blue that we've made before. Let's just bring that blue up so we know which one it is. No, we still got hold on, see? So turn hold off. Right, it's that blue there in the corner. Put hold back on. I can now select every drum file by doing that. And now those drum files that I've selected have lit up in the regions bin here. I can go over here to regions in region list and hit the blue again. And now they're marked as blue, which can be very handy if we're trying to search for alternate takes. Obviously in a different situation, you might want all your drums marked blue in advance. So that would involve you manually choosing them here or searching for them. So some of these ones didn't pick up because they're not used in the track. Now you would have to select them all manually. So let's just go say from snare down to Tom and then apply them as blue but you get the picture. Okay, let's close that region bin, get rid of the color palette, move on to some of the great new shortcuts that have been added. We can now shift S for solo, shift M for mute, shift R for record, or shift I for auto input mode. So I can take this kick track and it's as simple as shift S for solo, shift M for mute, shift I for auto input, and shift R for record enable. And naturally we can do these across multiple tracks. So by dragging across all these tracks with link track and edit selection enabled. So these tracks have now become enabled as well. Shift S will solo the whole lot. Shift M will mute the whole lot. Shift I auto input for the whole lot and Shift R record for the whole lot. The Shift S for solo shortcut will be extremely handy later when I show you the new comping mode as well. Okay, a couple of other little interface things. The big counter is now adjustable in size. So let's open that up. I can now grab the corner here and make this absolutely huge so it can be seen from across the room. Please excuse the shuttering, I'm dragging it a bit awkwardly. Or much smaller than had previously been allowed. Next up is the integrated universe window. The universe window has been in Pro Tools for a long time, but it was always a separate window that you had to open up and it was a little cumbersome to use. Now, if we go to the view menu, other displays universe, the window is integrated into our main edit window. We can resize it from here to fit many tracks if necessary. You can see I haven't gone down that far. These gray ones are my effects returns, which don't have any regions on them naturally. So I can just adjust it to there. And just like the universe window of the past, I can zoom in and now I can click on this and it will navigate me to anywhere in the session quickly and easily. And of course it respects the color coding. So if I know that this red one down here is important, I can jump to that and bingo. Oops, there you go, my other tracks. And bingo, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna put that away. And that's gonna lead me to my next favorite thing, which is this other displays menu itself. Because now I can use a macro program such as Quick Keys to access these things very quickly. So I've already created macros for all four of these. So now if I want to hide that universe, bang, it's hidden. If I want to open my track list in the edit window, I've got my quick key here, you can do your own, but I happen to be using option control shift on the Mac, because I like, I just grab those three in one big hit and hit T, there's my tracks, hit R, there's my regions. 
So that's very easy. It also enables me sometimes to have this region window open quite wide if you've got various paths showing. You might want, for instance, to show the disk name or the full path even, which can eat up a lot of real estate. So it's handy. Of course, that's eaten up half my screen now, but it's handy just to be able to go region, see you later. If I've got a problem, I can just bring it back all under one simple key command. Okay, stick around. Next up, I'm going to show the quick start dialog and the session template features that have been added to Pro Tools 8. Thanks.